Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This video is about eyeshadow palettes that I wish I had bought. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. We are still in the midst of eyeshadow palette week here on the channel. This will be video number six, and I thought it would be fun to chat about some eyeshadow palettes that may have been discontinued or that are pretty much impossible to find and that I feel I would have very much liked to have owned at some point in time. This was a video idea that one of you asked me to do, so I hope this video brings you what you had hoped. For now, if you're new here, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Micah. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, and this greatly influences my, uh, my, my makeup preferences. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then please stick around. Um, so yes, like I said, this was a video idea by one of you guys. I no longer remember who because I tend to plan my content ahead like two or three months in advance. And especially for these like themed video weeks and also when I do eyeshadow palette month, I jot down, down ideas whenever I run into them. And this is one that I know was recommended, I do, by one of you. I think in like the fall season or something like that. It's been a, it's been a while since I got the suggestion. Um, I think pretty much all of these um, are like discontinued or things that I thought I was going to get and then I didn't. Um, the first one, we're going to kick things off strong. This is the Natasha Denona Biba palette. I'll be inserting some pictures as I'm talking. Um, the Natasha Denona Biba palette is one that was actually on my wish list. I'm not sure if this is actually discontinued. I think it's still on the Natasha Denona website, um, but I think that's the only place where you can still buy it from. And since that's a US based website, it's going to be super expensive for me to get it. And this has also gone up in price a lot because I was on there uh, recently just to look up what Natasha Denona had on their website. And I think this is now 155 euros. And I'm like, you know, when I bought the gold and Alina, the bigger Natasha Denona palettes were 125. So where that 30 euro price point increase came from, I do not know. But yeah, the Biba is therefore very much not a little list. And the Biba, everybody was saying how much it's like the perfect neutral tone palette. Here's why I never bought it. It's got too many mattes. I believe it's all matte or not. It has like two or three shimmers, I think. It's been a while since I really scrutinized this color story. But what irks me the most about it is that it's very warm toned. And I always like, I always find it so mind boggling. I actually saw somebody showing um, a Jaclyn Hill palette, you know, from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Vault. There was this really warm toned one with almost oranges. And everybody was telling this lady in the comments, that's a neutral palette. No, it's not. It's a warm tone neutral palette, perhaps, which means it can be neutral on some people, but on my pale face with a cool to neutral undertone, it definitely isn't. And I feel that the only true, true cool tone in this palette is a gray. And we all know how I feel about gray toned eyeshadow. If that's the only thing the brand seems to be able to do in terms of a cool tone, I'm out. And this palette was very much that. So even though this was discontinued, even though everybody has been telling me for years how it is like the best neutral palette. And I definitely looked at this. This was very early on in my Natasha Denona journey that I was like, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty. I would have liked to get it. And then they discontinued it. And now it's pretty much impossible to get. So do I really miss this in my collection? Probably not, but part of me still wants to try the formula, but I now know what Natasha Denona formula can bring me. And I have the I Need a Nude, which is like my perfect neutral tone palette. So did I need it in my life? No, but part of me still wishes I had bought it for content reasons. I'm not gonna lie, for content reasons, this would have made a lot of sense. Number two, and this one is again, similar reason, similar brand, Natasha Denona Metropolis. And this palette, 
It was out when I was in New York in 2019. And this was in Sephora. It had just been released. And I remember looking at it like, I'm going to take this home. And I almost did. It has some really stunning teals in there. And that's the main reason why I'd want to get it. It was bigger at more shades in than other palettes from Natasha Denona for sure. And it had a pretty decent price point for how many shades you got. This was again released before we got too many of the midi sized palettes. So that's why my brain at the time was like, oh, I'm going to love this. The reason why I didn't take it home was because I found this on my final day and I had already spent quite a bit of money. And I was like, adding this much, like this amount of money, um, I don't think it's a financially good decision to do this right now. And at that time, Natasha Denona, Denona was pretty much impossible for me to get. And then it was discontinued. And again, here I'm like, for content, it would have made so much sense. Color story wise, with what I like really where my preferences lie at the minute, I really think it would have been too many warm tones for my liking, which is another reason why I was like, mm, not sure, not sure that's going to be my jam, but because it was so hyped up and so many people are saying how this is still till this day, one of their favorite Natasha Denona palettes. I'm like, mm, I should have bought that when I had the chance I should have, but yeah, I can't buy everything. I'm only one person. There's only so much makeup I can try. Uh, number three, and this again could potentially still be bought because it is still available. This is the Odin's Eye Stone and Rock eyeshadow palette. This is what it looks like. I have the Jewels and Gems and I bought the Jewels and Gems to give Odin's Eye another chance because I tried the Christmas palettes from 2022, the Christmas Eve and Merry Christmas palettes, and I just didn't think it was the same quality that I know Odin's Eye can do. Um, the shimmers were just not great and they needed a lot of building up and I felt the color stories weren't quite coming together for me. Um, and I was like, they, I saw this collection. And I was like, okay, I'll buy Jewels, Jewels and Gem, just the one, because part of me wanted to buy both. Like I was so close to just buying both. So close. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna like stone and rock. I have other things in my collection that can do this. I have bought a Glam Shop palette that does the same thing essentially around the same time. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get the cooler tone one, Jewels and Gems with like an interesting rosy shade and some slate sort of shades as well. Some really interesting shimmers. I was like, then I, I, I can at least try it again and give them a chance. And then I had the same issues with the Jewels and Gem that I had with the other palettes I had tried more recently. So I am now seeing this conversation happening on a lot of other channels. I'm not the only person anymore who's saying that Odin's Eye seems to have some quality issues, at least within the consistency of their quality. So it can be a bit hit and miss between you getting a good palette from the brand and getting a palette like the ones I've tried where I feel like, nah, yeah, it's pretty, but... I can't build up the shimmers for the life of me. And that's why I never bought the Stone Rim Rock. And part of me still wants it. Part of me still does. But because I have that Glam Shop palette that I enjoy so much, I also know I don't need it. So yeah, part of me is like, I should have bought both when I had a chance because now I am certain I will never buy it again. But part of me is like, again, for content reasons, it would have made a lot of sense if I had this in my makeup collection, but. Like I've mentioned, I can't have everything in my life. It would essentially mean having to like buy extra storage somewhere because if I'd have kept around or would have bought everything that I ever set eyes on and made me go like, ooh, you're interesting, I would run out of space very quickly if I did that. Another palette that is still available that I think, again, part of me still wants this. The Nomad Cosmetics Royal Europe palette. Again, part of me wishes that I had bought this back when it was still like brand new and it wasn't like one of their old, older palettes because I think this came out about a year ago or so. Um, and this is a jewel tone color story. And here's the reason why I didn't buy it. Every single one of the shimmers is a multi-chrome. 
And as much as everybody adores the indie makeup brands for doing multi-chromes left, right, and center, I am someone who's of the opinion that I like a good multi-chrome every once in a while, but I don't need it to be in every single palette I try. And here's the thing. The thing that this Nomad palette does, I have been doing for years with my Ar uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, subculture palette. Because that has jewel tones in, and they're murkier and grungier than the ones in the Nomad. And then I take a couple of my Sydney, no, not Sydney Grace, Cleona stained glass, and I make a look. And this is something I like to do every fall season. I tend to take some of the tealy shades or some of the mustards that the subculture has, and I throw in a couple of multi-chromes, and it works every single time. So the concept of this eyeshadow palette would really work for me. I just know it would. But it's also dark. It doesn't have a single other option in terms of shimmers than those multi-chromes. And yeah, as rich and jewel toned and it's got blues, greens and purples, which is my jam. So you would expect me to perhaps have this. And I love myself a Nomad palette because I really enjoy their formula. But yeah, Nomad Cosmetics, yeah, this Royal Europe palette just wasn't it for me. And again, like I said, part of me wishes I had bought it back when it first launched because it would have made sense. It would have made so much sense for my eyeshadow palette collection to have this in there. And yeah, it just didn't really work out that way. Again, I can't have everything. Palette number five is actually a duo of palettes because this is the Glam Light and Scooby-Doo Scooby collection, the first one we got with the two smaller palettes. And th it's very similar to the Nomad Cosmetics uh, Royal Europe, where one of them was more like limey shades and a bit brighter, and the other one was incredibly murky and dark with like blues and like teals and purples. It looked so beautiful. <laughs> Um, but this was at the time when I was just not really attuned to Glamlight. Glamlight is a brand that I first tried when everybody was going gaga for the cake palette. Remember that palette? It was in everybody's favorites list that year. And I bought it and I was like, this is what everybody's raving about? I was just not a fan of the quality. And that has put me off of trying Glamlight for a very long time. It really, really did. Um, and then they started doing those horror palettes and now I've tried the ghost face and I'm like, oh, but that, that was very pretty. I really enjoyed the looks I did with it and those shimmers did work for me. So now I'm like, Glam Light does have a really nice formula. I do actually enjoy them and these do come back in stock every once in a while and every once in a while I'm like, oh, should I get these? But again, as for me as well, with these Scooby-Doo palettes from Glam Light, I just feel the time has passed. I don't need them. I have other things in my makeup collection that can do exactly this um, because I have plenty of blue, green, purple palettes in my lifetime that I don't need this. I don't need this. But part of me wants it still. Part of me is like, yeah. I should have just made this the first thing from Glam Light. I tried again, um, but yeah, I just didn't. And now I'm like, nah, oh well. Number six is one where I was like, oh yeah, I've been watching some eyeshadow palette declutter and collection videos lately um, just to kill some time. And uh, I saw this one coming up and I was like, oh, the Flower Punk palette from, Col uh, from Kaleidos. I had forgotten that this thing existed. And this is like, this is a palette where I'm like, oh, again, it would have made so much sense in my makeup collection for me to own it. Those really nice murky greens, the brighter teals, these pinky tones. I think it would have really worked. However, this is a bit of an odd palette in Kaleidos' range. And what I also saw is that around the time they released this, they actually had an Instagram post where they swatched this palette against some of the Futurism palettes, which I own. Um, I decluttered the VR Neons and the Sci-Fi Greens, and I used my Sci-Fi green, Greens packaging to repress some Beauty Bay shades into it. But um, So those are gone, but I felt that those comparative swatches, 
instead of swaying me to buy the product, it actually told me that I already had shades like this that were going to be too similar um, because some of the peachy shades in the Shishimi City are, well, they're not pink, but they could give me the look of the pinks in there. Um, the At the time, I still had the sci-fi greens, so the murky greens that were in that palette were too similar to the murky greens in the Flower Punk. Um, and then, you know, you just have a couple of tealy shades in the Astro Pink as well. And the VR Neons is one that I have. So those turquoisey things I kind of had as well. So when I already own so many things from a brand that are so similar to something they are coming out with, I know I don't need it. And this palette is now long gone. And part of me, whenever I see it in other people's makeup collections, I'm like, yes. I missed out on that one and it, it kind of stings every single time I see it. But yeah, I hope the people that do have it really enjoy it. I don't need it. Like I know some people are going to leave comments saying, oh, but you can go onto Macari and still buy them. And I'm like, you, you will have seen my eyeshadow palette collection in my declutter a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, I have plenty of eyeshadow. I don't need any more. And the things I'm now looking for whenever I do purchase palettes, have to be either formulas I really enjoy that I'm really excited about or I need to be super excited for the color story that a brand does. Um, those are my demands and I'm, I don't need to go chasing used or lightly used makeup on resale sites. Um, that is not, that's not my vibe. That's not what I want to go for. Um, number seven, Fantasy Cosmetica, the Sorcerer palette. There are two Fantasy Cosmetica palettes I'm missing in my collection. I don't own the Bard and I don't own the Sorcerer palette. So this kind of is a two for one because it kind of goes for the Bard as well. Like part of me wants to complete the connect, to complete the collection. It's sort of like, you know, Pokemon, got to catch them all. I, I, I need, I need the entire collection in my life. Like part of my brain wants to satisfy that. And I used to, I used to have that collector's mentality with the Urban Decay Naked palettes. I had it with the ABH palettes for some time, um, like the older range with the modern Renaissance. I had all of those. Um, and also a lot of the Too Faced, um, like chocolate bar palettes in the tins, like back when those palettes were out, but nowadays there are just so many palettes out and especially so many brands nowadays are releasing things like every six to eight weeks, um, indie brands every three months or so. And I'm like, it's just a bit much. And as much as I really love the Fantasy Cosmetica formula, it's one of my favorite indie brands to shop from because I love their color stories. They are nine pans. They are not overly expensive and you get a lot of bang for your buck um, because within the nine pans, you can do a lot of things. I love the Rogue palette. I'm excited to try the Wizard palette as well this month. It is on the to try pile for April. Um, and the Sorcerer and the Bard, the Bard is warm tones with a pop of blue and the Sorcerer are bright pinks with blues as well. And the Sorcerer is the one that still like pulls on my heartstrings the most, more so than the Bard. The Bard I would solely buy to try it for a review and then it would end up in my makeup collection. And I would probably never use it again. The Sorcerer, it's a sort of a similar vibe to what I'm wearing today. It's got like these like Easter eggy kind of spring vibe kind of shades. And I think it could look really nice on me. Um, but then again, I passed up on it at the time because at the time Fantasy Cosmetica was only available, available to me through their official website. The more recent purchases I did, I did through Monolith, which, makes, which, which just makes it a lot more affordable for me. Um, but the Sorcerer is one I then passed up on because I was like, mm, it's too bright. It's too colorful. I don't reach for incredibly bright palettes anymore. And I was like, uh, do I need this? And like I said, part of me wants this part of me wants this so bad, but I know I shouldn't. So I wish I had bought it when it came out. Um, you know, I should have had, I should have had this foresight that I would love fantasy Cosmetica so much that I would want to own all of their palettes and it is a bit more attainable to me right now, but it's not something I want to do. I no longer want to be that person that just buys things to buy them. 
to have to, to complete the collection, you could say, to complete the set. I no longer want to have that mentality, so that's why I'm um, I'm not going to be chasing after this one. A brand that I wanted to try a palette by, but then it was discontinued before I could actually purchase it is the Ensley Rain Midwinter Dream Palette. This palette came on my radar sometime last year, um, and it was a monolith. It did come back in stock, but because it was so expensive, I decided to pass up on it. Then it sold out and it never came back. I have purchased some Ensley Rain though. Um, the Cold Moon and the Land of Enchantment are both in my current makeup review. So those are things you can expect me to review by the end of this month as well. So I'm gonna be able to try the brand, but the Midwinter Dream, which I think was a collab palette, I think it was limited edition because of that, um, is one that I would have liked because it had so many fun shimmering shades. And part of me would have liked to try some of their older things, you could say, as a, like a starting point rather than where they are at right now, because that would have given me a sense of where they came from. But yeah, this is one that I sadly missed out on. Um, and then nine is the uh, Blend Bunny Sugar and Grunge palette. Um, this is apparently now being discontinued because someone filed a lawsuit. Something to do with the name Grunge and someone has said like, hey, I own this, like I have a patent using this this, this product name so you can't use it. Uh, at least that's what I saw on Instagram. Uh, it is still on Monolith. And this one is again one that I almost purchased. Like I've had, like I've been eyeing this up and I remember when I did my new makeup releases video, I was telling you guys how I wasn't gonna buy it, how I didn't feel it was like super 90s inspired because I was around for the 90s and the, the 90s in my in my recollection were just brown and icy white shimmer with lots of eyeliner. That That's what I remember, and like the brown lip liner with a nude like concealer like lip. That's what I remember makeup in the 90s being like. Um, but these like brighter pastels, it just wasn't making a lot of sense. But yeah, it does have blues, greens, purples, and some cooler tone neutrals. So part of me kind of knows that this is the kind of color story that I would like, but I have the lore from Blend Bunny, so I can satisfy my blue, green, purple needs if I'd like to. Um, and as much as I like this, I also felt that some of the deeper shades didn't necessarily go well with the lighter shades as well. And now it's gone, and now I'm like, yeah, I could like rush over to Monolith and buy this, because it's still on there and the owner has said that she's gonna try and see if she can work out a way to bring this back somehow, maybe under a different name. But yeah, these Sugar and Grunge is one that I kinda, I kinda wished I didn't miss out on this one. But then again, even though I love the Blend Bunny formula, I think they have some really good quality eyeshadow. I feel color story wise, it definitely doesn't come together for my complexion. Um, I don't need a million blend shades and the deeper shades are usually too deep and I don't get enough shimmers. So there are a lot of reasons why I'm not interested in buying more from Blend Bunny until they start doing more shimmers because their shimmers are beautiful. You just don't get that many. Um, and finally, the last palette I need to talk about is the Pat McGrath and apparently it was called the Subliminal Platinum Bronze. It's a six pan that P Pat McGrath used to do. So back when we got the first three Pat McGrath palettes, if I remember correctly, there were also six pan versions that were, uh, I think half the price of what the motherships were. And those were discontinued quite quickly. And this platinum bronze one, I remember back when Pat McGrath first really came onto the scene hard and everybody was raving about the brand, and I was trying to, like, trying to figure out what I wanted to try from them first. Um, this was the thing that I had put on my wish list, and then it sold out before I can, before I could ever try it and get my hands on it. So yeah, the subliminal platinum bronze from Pat McGrath I think would have made a lot of sense as a first purchase. But then I ended up buying the larger Mothership One subliminal, and I think there are shades in both of those palettes that are similar-ish. So I definitely don't need it. Um, I definitely do not like, um, do not think I would have really, really liked having both of those in my collection. And 
this was the thing I had thought of myself. Like, this is the way I'm going to try Pat McGrath. So yeah, part of me regrets not buying that before it ever sold out. Um, so yeah, those are the 10 eyeshadow palettes that I thought I should have gotten my hands on that I sadly didn't. Uh, a lot of these were discontinued already. Uh, some of them may still be lurking around some of the uh, somewhere. But yeah, other palettes are still around and I just feel the time has passed for me and my makeup collection and have it make sense. You know what I mean? So yeah, that, that's the 10 palettes I wanted to chat to you about. Let me know in a comment down below what eyeshadow palette you wish you had bought that you sort of missed out on for whatever reason, um, because I would love to know. If for now, I would like to thank you so very much for being here today. I do post four regular videos over on this channel, so there's a lot more content coming your way. And we're gonna finish this eyeshadow palette week off tomorrow with my all-time favorite eyeshadow palettes. So I'd like to stay tuned for now, and then I hope to see you in my next video.